Next, I'll show you how to set up your audio interface, which you can use as an audio device to output to speakers or headphones and record audio from microphones, line inputs, and instrument inputs. First, I'm gonna go up to Studio One, go down to Preferences, and then in the Audio Setup tab, you can set your playback device and your recording device. So right now I have both of these set to my Mackie Big Knob Studio. Typically you want your playback and recording devices to be the same thing. However, there might be some situations where they're different. For example, if you're using the built-in output, just the built-in speakers on your computer, and maybe recording with the built-in microphone. Or maybe you're using a USB microphone for recording. However, if you want to use any sort of studio setup or studio microphones and speakers, you're gonna to wanna to use your audio interface as both your playback device and your recording device. Next, I'll go down to Song Setup, and under the Audio I.O. Setup tab, you'll be able to set up your inputs and outputs on your audio interface. So you can see here that my audio interface has two inputs. This matrix allows you to customize the routing of your inputs and outputs. You can rename them to whatever you like, and you can create both mono and stereo inputs. Now, right now, this is showing my inputs one and two as stereo, and it's showing them as mono input left and mono input right. I'm rarely using this interface for stereo recordings, so I'm gonna do this a bit differently. So what I'll do is just select all of these and click remove to start from scratch. Then I'll click add mono twice, and now I just have two inputs labeled input one and input two. You can double click on these to customize the name of each input as well. Under my outputs, I want to utilize my third and fourth outputs. So I'm gonna click Add Stereo, and I'll name these Output 1 and 2 for my main stereo outs, and then Output 3 and 4 for my secondary stereo outs. This is helpful if you are using multiple sets of speakers, and you wanna be able to change between those different sets of speakers in the software, rather than using a monitor controller. These can also be used for routing audio signals out of your audio interface, like if you're sending a DI guitar signal out to an amp for reamping, or maybe you're sending an audio signal out to external hardware for a hybrid mixing setup. Now that I'm all set, I'll just click OK. I'll go back into my preferences by pressing Command, Comma, or Control, Comma on a PC. And next, I want to talk about the device block size. Block size is often referred to as buffer size in other DAWs. The block size controls how audio data is processed. With a lower block size, like 16 or 32 samples, audio data is processed in smaller blocks or chunks of information, but it does so at a more rapid pace. So with lower block sizes, you'll get less latency in your recording signal because the data is processed faster and in smaller blocks. For example, at 32 samples with my interface, you can see that the input latency is 3.92 milliseconds and the output latency is 3.69 milliseconds. So the combined round trip latency from input to output is under eight milliseconds, which is not even going to be noticeable. With a higher block size, like 1024 for example, data is processed more slowly, but in larger blocks, and therefore you'll experience more latency while recording. For example, at 1024, I'm getting 24.6 milliseconds of input latency, and 24.4 milliseconds of output latency. So almost 50 milliseconds of round trip latency. Latency is essentially heard as an audible delay in the audio signal. And this is certainly a bad thing for recording, especially if your musician or singer is hearing themselves on a delay, this can be distracting to them and can mess up the performance. However, it's not necessarily a problem when editing and mixing. So why use a larger block size at all? Well, when processing plugins like EQ, compression, reverb, etc., these plugins can eat up a lot of your processing power, and at higher block sizes, you'll have more processing power, which means you can use more simultaneous plugins. Whereas at a lower block size, if you use too many plugins, your song might stop playback and you might get some playback errors because lower block sizes give you less processing power. So as a general rule of thumb, Use lower block sizes for recording for less latency, but use higher block sizes for editing and mixing for the additional processing power. Since I'm gonna be recording, I'm gonna set this to 32 samples. 